Well, good morning, Mount Zion. My name is Brian Bradshaw, and I want to welcome you to our worship experience on today. We are so excited that you have tuned into service today because it's going to be a day that's going to literally catapult you into the next dimension that God has for your life. Listen, today, Bishop is closing out the Elevation series with part five. It won't end like it started. Woo, I tell you what, that has blessed me already. But not only that, but today we are also celebrating all of our spring 2021 college graduates who have graduated throughout the entire month, not only from colleges and universities in Nashville and the surrounding cities, but also around the world. We are so thankful for all of the college students who are connected to this ministry. We are incredibly proud of all of our graduates and we want you to join us in celebrating each and every one of them. With so many things happening today, as we get ready to head into worship, I want you to like, to comment and share our broadcast with everyone you know because an incredible worship experience is getting ready to happen right now. Let's go in to worship. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's Youth Sunday again, and we've come to give God the glory, honor, and praise, and we've come to call him Yahweh. If you don't mind, like, sharing, tagging, and commenting. Let's worship together. Come on. Come on, I need you to put your hands together like this. Come on. We love you. Nobody like you oh, yeah. All the glory belongs to you All the glory belongs to you, oh God yeah. mm -hmm. Say all the glory belongs to you All the glory belongs to you, oh God Yeah, yeah Say Say on the glory, say now. On the glory belongs to you. On the glory belongs to you. Oh, no, 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 God. Yeah. Say it one more time. Say on the glory belongs to you. Yeah. On the glory belongs to you. Oh, God. Sing that one more time. Say it one more time. Say on the glory, say. On the glory belongs to you. Oh, God. You and we give you the highest praise on the glory, say, All the glory to you. Oh, yeah. All the glory to Come on. You. Let's do this right quick. Come on, let's do it. And we say, Hi, 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 All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. And I'll be guilty of giving you my best. Sit on the glory, sit. All the glory belongs to you. Sit on the glory, oh. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Can you say it again? Say it on the glory, sit. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory, oh. Let's have a praise party right here. Come on. And we say hi.
to you, oh God. Declare that right there where you are, say. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. And because all the glory belongs to you, we're here for you. Come on, put those hands together. Come on. I can't see you. Come on. Come on, do. Y'all ready? Let's go. See ya. simply says this we're here for you let your spirit move as we shout your praise from my hearts to your ears all the glory is yours now forevermore hear our worship now we can give this to you so we're here for you watch this so we dance Woo! and we sing and we worship For you, we give everything to the one who is worthy. Our hearts are ready, Lord. Everybody say, We're here for you. Say, Come on. Your spirit move. Take your spirit move. Come on. As we shout your praise from our hearts. All the glory is yours. Now, now forevermore. For our worship. worship. Let's go. We so we're here for you. We're here for you. Woo. Let's go. To feel. declaration if you don't come we will move we're desperate lord for a touch from you if you don't come we will move we're desperate lord for a touch from you you say if you don't come hey. we won't move yes sir. we're desperate lord for a touch from you you don't come if you serious I need you to go get your family and make that declaration can you do that for me can they do that for me praise team yes Lord 
So right now, I'm going to invite you to worship with us, all right? So I need you to like, share, tag, and comment and tell your friends that if God don't move, we won't move. Now tell them, tune into the mount. Y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? One, two, everybody clip go. Hey. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're experiencing today. But I believe by faith that God is God in your life. But he's not just God. He's an intercessor for you. You see, God sent the Holy Spirit to intercede on your behalf, to comfort you, to minister to you, to be there for you in your time of need. And all you may need is just one touch. And I believe by faith that if you would avail yourself to God today, He'll come and meet you right at your point of need. I don't know what you're going through. I don't care what it is that you're feeling in your heart, in your spirit. It's not too much for God to handle. All you have to do is extend your hands and tell God, God, it's all you. It's all you. It's all you. I can't handle it on my own. It's all about you. I can't deal, this, deal with this on my own. It's all about you. If you will make a resignation before God and say, God, not my will, but yours be done. I guarantee you, he'll touch you right where you are. Let's go to God and pray right now. And so, Father, in this moment, we thank you and we take this opportunity just like the woman with the issue of blood. And we reach for the hem of your garment because we know with just one touch from you that we can be made whole, that our minds could be made whole, that our hearts could be made whole, that our families could be made whole, Father. So we just thank you for this moment, God. We thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. We thank you that you are regulating our minds. We thank you that you are calming our spirits. We thank you, Father, that you are letting us know right in this very moment that you have our lives in every situation in control. So we take this opportunity to bless your name. We take this opportunity to say that you are worthy. We take this opportunity to exalt you and to say thank you for this moment, God. We bless you for all that you're going to do. We pray now in the name of Jesus that the word will reach each and every person right at their point of need. And we just step out on faith and declare, even in this moment, God, that victory is ours that victory is ours, that healing is ours, that deliverance is ours, and that the word that you minister to our hearts on today will be exactly what we need, and we give you glory and honor for it in advance. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank God for you today. Wherever you're watching around the world, I'm Bishop Joseph Juan Walker III and you're tuned into the Mount Zion Church right here in Nashville, Tennessee. We believe that this is a moment in time for you. God's gonna speak to you in a very intentional way and we welcome you and thank God wherever you're watching around the world. Make no mistake about it, we absolutely appreciate what God is getting ready to do in your life. And I want you to make sure you connect with us. I would love I would love to know who you are. I'd love for you to follow me, follow my wife. Uh, I'm Joseph Walker 3 on Instagram. She's Dr. Steph Walker. We just believe in connectivity. And do you know, I believe that God is going to do something so incredibly awesome. And I want you to prepare your heart. Tell everybody in your family, get ready, y'all. We got we to gotta position ourselves and poise ourselves for the revelation that God is going to send to us today because we know God's going to do something amazing. Are you ready? 
I know I am. And I want you to get ready. Just lift your hands real quick and just say this to me. Father, do what you want to do, how you want to do it in my life. And I thank you in advance for what shall happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, didn't that feel better? Aren't you ready now? I know I am. Let me tell you, I'm excited because I want to uh, begin by celebrating all of our graduates. We are so blessed. And of course, I want to celebrate our college graduation uh, from all around uh, the city. We have folks who have graduated from universities around the country here at Mount Zion, and we're grateful. Even under these unusual circumstances of COVID-19, you have prevailed, you have come through, and we are celebrating you today. And we're celebrating the students um, just from everywhere. And I want to just celebrate them. Mount Zion, I want you to join me in celebrating all of our college students. We say congratulations. Wow, what a blessing. We honor and celebrate all of our college students. And you know what? <coughs> there are many, many more. There are many, many more who have graduated. We didn't get their information in time, but we definitely want to celebrate you as well. And if you didn't see your picture up there, know Mount Zion loves you and appreciates you as well. We thank God for you. And uh, we certainly are uh, thanking God for that. Now, we do want to also uh, celebrate our very own Elder Daryl Telefero. Uh, today, we take a moment to celebrate his amazing accomplishments for over 21 years. He's provided leadership here at the Mount Zion Church and service to our church with the caliber of excellence that I've often envisioned when I pass kind of an anointing on to a spiritual son or a spiritual daughter. He'll be transitioning to be the uh, assistant pastor and chief ministry officer for the All Nations Worship Center in Chicago as well as New York. And we certainly want you to know that uh, we honor him. We thank God for his service to Mount Zion. And I want you, Mount Zion, to uh, communicate to him on social media, communicate to him if you want to send a card to the church or a gift to him. Uh, I want you to do that. His, uh, he'll be starting there on June 1. And uh, we want to make certain that he knows Mount Zion loves him, and we do. And I'm so thankful. And you'll see a special tribute we've done to him, and you'll hear from him right after the announcement period. So stay tuned. Uh, it'll be a blessing. Thank you, Elder Talaferro, for all uh, that you mean to Mount Zion, and we appreciate you. Also, Mount Zion, I really would love for you to support what I'm getting better to say. Uh, Jerry White who served as our CFO after 20 years of serving in Mount Zion Church, a tenure that um, man took us through even recession, set in motion, an extraordinary way in which churches handle finances. Our church was recognized uh, and, and um, received so many different accolades because of how well uh, it runs infrastructurally. It's because of the incredible service and work that Jerry has provided. Um, Jerry, as many of you may know, if you don't know, I'll tell you, Jerry is my brother, my older brother. He retired about a year ago. And Jerry is battling a illness. He's battling it with grace 
frontal temporal dementia. I want you to look it up, research it. It'll help you understand what we're up against, what we're dealing with, frontal temporal dementia. Um, I want you to pray for him. I want you to pray for our family. I want you to pray uh, that God would touch him, that God would heal him. There is no cure medically for this. We're standing in faith. Saturday, this Saturday, June the 5th at 12 o'clock at the OHB location, we'll be hosting a special retirement party for Jerry, our beloved CFO. And it would mean so much to have you drive through. Here you can bring gift cards and love and all whatever you want to do, just to wave at Jerry, it means so much. Um, it would just mean a lot. There's so much in this season your pastor's carrying and um, just know I appreciate your support and love and our family does as well. So this Saturday, I pray you will just drop through. Let us know you're praying as we celebrate my brother. And thank you. I know Mount Zion, you will. And even those of you virtually will be having it on Facebook Live as well. So you can send your love and support that way as well. This Wednesday, I pray you were blessed by the series we just came out of. Man, I enjoyed that series. Didn't you? It's a powerful series. I mean, a powerful series. What happens after? We're going to do something we do every June. It's our favorite moments from the Mount. We've done it last year. We'll do it this June. We normally do Take Me Back Revival. And we're going to have some amazing services, 12 noon and 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. We're going to take you back to when Pastor Teller Chapman came and blessed our ministry. So I want you to, you know, get yourself ready for it. It's going to be amazing. And I want you to uh, tune in to Bible study this Wednesday and throughout the entire month for this series. It's going to be a blessing. Also, I want you to make certain Mount Zion, and this means everything to me, Cloud Conference, Full Gospel 2021. As I lead the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, the Cloud Conference happens in June, June 22nd to 24th. And I want you to register. It's free. Every person who says, I love my pastor, I love my church, I support you, if you would just register for this, it would mean everything to me. Register and be engaged. That's classes, credible speakers. You'll see it all, and I want you to be a part of it. So make certain that you do that. It would mean a lot to me. So thank you so much, and uh, we appreciate it. And those are our reflections on today. And we're going to prepare uh, to worship God in our giving today. And I want you to to give in a way today that says, Lord, I thank you for your goodness. God's been so good to us, y'all. We have really no other option but to be a blessing to him. Today, as you give your tithe, I know the world is kind of opening back up and people are being a little distracted and trying to go and do this and do that. But let's not forget, it was the Lord who brought you through all of this. Let's make certain we continue to put in first. Our tithe matters, our offering matters, our seed matters. So let's do that. I want you to sow this seed. I want you to give your tithe. I want this Sunday to represent that we are still focused on the things of God. So you can give information that's right there on the screen. You can text to give, mail it in, 75940 Hickory Boulevard, White's Creek, Tennessee. Thank you for being so generous as we're able to be a blessing to so many around the world. Thank you. So, Father, we thank you right now for the privilege we have to give. Bless every household, every family. And we pray now that uh, you will bless seed sown in good ground. In Jesus' name, amen. the Taylor Fair. We are so excited for you. It's bittersweet because we hate to lose you, but we're excited for your future and we thank God for all that you've imparted into our lives. Elder Taylor Farrow, my friend, my brother, my teacher. Um, it's with mixed emotions that I, I stand here today. 
uh, to celebrate your achievement, but also uh, will miss your presence here at Mount Zion. But I just want to uh, thank you for all the things that you've done um, in my life personally, as well as in the um, life of the ministry of Mount Zion Church. I vividly recall when you came all the way to Montgomery, Alabama uh, for my mother's funeral as I was delivering the eulogy. And it's amazing the impact that that had in, in that moment. And I recall other times where I was in various other ministry moments and I could send you a text and you would send me some information to help me through. So um, I consider it an honor to be linked to you as a brother, a friend, and uh, you, you've been an, uh, an excellent teacher. Typically it's the older brother that does the, the teaching, but in this case, you have done well, younger brother. I'm so proud of you. God bless you and we love you. God bless you, love you. Love you. Oftentimes, Elder Talaferro will joke with the dance ministry about hitting him with the flags during prayer. Well, we joke back and tell him it's just a touch of the anointing. So as you embark on this new journey in life, know that every time that we raise those flags, it's just a touch of the anointing. We are covering you in prayer. So from the ministry of dance and mime, we love you, we will miss you, and we are so excited as God walks you into this next phase of life. Uh, Pastor, Daryl Telefero. My brother, I just want to tell you I love you. I am so proud of you. You have made such a great impression on me. And it not only has affected me, it this permeates throughout my family. They hear me talk about you. And one thing I am honored to say is that I can't speak ill of you in public, and nor have I done it in private. Man, you have been a blessing to me, and I wish you nothing but success I love you. You are my brother. I'm so proud of you. I just am excited about where God is taking you and what you're going to be doing. And just keep in mind, I'll be in Chicago in September. So let's hook up again. I love you, brother. Man, you just keep on with the fight. Thank you. Elder Darrell M. Telefero, congratulations on the promotion, my brother. And no doubt you're going to thrive in your next kingdom assignment as the assistant pastor and chief ministry officer at the All Nations Worship Assembly in Chicago. Man, you're so deserving of the elevation. Elder Tally, it has been an extreme honor to serve alongside you in ministry. Thank you for teaching us how to lead and Thank how you. to stay committed in our service to the Lord. Yes. My brother, I am so excited for your opportunity to soar even further in God's kingdom. You deserve all of the good things that God has in store for you. Absolutely. Man, we're so grateful for your faithfulness to Bishop, Dr. Staff, the First Family, and the Mount Zion Church family, man. You made such a difference here. As I know, you'll make a difference in Chicago. This is one thing I know for sure. You know why? Because great leaders always make a difference. Godspeed, my friend. We'll see you soon. Elder Daryl Telefero, what I'm gonna remember about you most is the how in servanthood. Sir, you exemplify the how. And what I meant by that is a couple of years ago when I became an ordained elder, I asked, show me how to do the ceremonies in which I would now have to do. And you were like, sure. And there were several moments that are several times when I had to commit Mr. Waterbottle um, to the grave. There were several times that I had to um, marry two individual bears. There are several times where there were scriptures that I chose that you like, oh, did you think about this in this person's death? Or did you think about this in this person's death? But what I want, to under, want you to know is you have shown me how to be a faithful servant. What I would say is you served our God, Mount Zion, and Bishop Walker with honor and humility. You've served God with obedience. You've served Mount Zion and Bishop in your obedience. And you've served 
Bishop Walker, as well as Mount Zion with wisdom. Sir, you are a walking example of faithful servanthood in how you serve. And in that, I thank you. Deuteronomy 29 and 9 blessing is that you will be prosperous in your ways because you kept the covenant in the things that the Lord had called you to do. Sir, I wish you well on your next endeavors. Please note that I love you and I appreciate everything that you showed me how to do. Thank you and I hope all is well with you on your next journey. A fond memory of Elder Darrell Telefero. I actually first met Elder Darrell Telefero on the Holy Hill at American Baptist College. And I want to say that since I met him then, up until now, he has been the exact same person. Um, all the time, he has always been somebody that has mentored, encouraged, um, encouraged people to do better. He's always had a pastor's heart. Um, and as he matriculated, as he growed, he has grown and been groomed into a beautiful person. And I'm so excited about what it is that God is about to do in his life and how God is about to use him globally not only in the kingdom, but other places throughout the world. So congratulations, Elder Daryl Telefero, and I pray you much success. Ella, Elder, Pastor, Executive Pastor, Ministry Leader. <laughs> nah, man, hey, listen, man, y'all disturbing my vacation with this, man. You know, uh, as a brother, your big brother, you know I love you, man, but you leaving and all this, and we celebrating while on vacation is kind of tough for me. So, you know, I'm gonna let you have it. But now, all jokes aside and all seriousness, um, Loren and I uh, wouldn't miss this for the world. We out here on vacation and took a pause to say we love you, we're gonna miss you. Much success to you. Uh, you know, I told you just what I think yesterday when I talked to you, I have family up in Chicago. So whenever we're in the area, we would definitely be swinging through, staying at your spot for free. And whoever else watches this, uh, stay at his spot for free. <laughs> but man, we love you. All is well. Keeping our prayers up for you. We know God has bigger and better and great things for you ahead. You deserve it. It's your time. It's your turn. Take it and run with it. We all know what eagles do. They have vision to see far. We love you, man. Peace. Love you, Tally. Hey, Elder, it's Martrell. I remember as a college student in 2009, when I came to Mount Zion and I saw you doing what you do and I saw you ministering to people, but after that one particular service, you gave out your personal number to everybody in the room. I was so shocked. I was so amazed. But that's the same number I'm still using right now. And I just want to say that you have made an incredible mark on my life personally, but on the lives of so many college students and so many members here at Mount Zion. And can I just say this? The Nashville community at large. Your work ethic, your tenacity, your determination, and most of all, your heart for God is the thing that has taken you this far. And I believe it's the thing that's taking you to the next phase and to the next era and to the future. I am so happy for you, so excited for you. I cannot wait to see all God is gonna do through your life. I believe it's going to take the world by storm. Keep going and keep that same number. I love you so much, congratulations. I'm a firm believer that some of the greatest blessings you'll ever receive in your life come in the form of people. Elder Tally, getting to know you, getting to glean from you and to serve alongside of you is truly one of my life's greatest blessings. Although I am extremely sad to know that you are leaving the Mount, I'm so grateful for the opportunity that God gave me um, to get to know you and to call you friend. I am, um, I'm so grateful for everything that you have taught me um, and everything that I've become to know about what it means to really serve and to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love you from the bottom of my heart and I wish you nothing but the best, nothing but the greatest blessings in everything that God has in store for your life. I am so excited about this next season and I'm gonna be right there cheering for you along the way. I love you. 
Hi, I'm Yvette Hale. I'm, I'm one of the lead ushers here at Mount Zion. Um, Elder Telefero is our overseer at, uh, of the usher ministry. And one of our fond my fondest memory of uh, uh, Elder, one of them is when he had helped us usher. He came from the pulpit one Sunday because of a snowstorm. He actually helped uh, usher that service. So that's one of the fondest memories that I have of him. He is a great leader. He had been a great leader and overseer and helped guiding us and in, in leading us in the usher ministry of any questions that we might have. I do wish him nothing but the best in his new career moving, moving to Chicago. Like I said, he'll be sorely missed and we hope to see him soon. Elder Talaferro, as you can see, man, so many people love you and thank God for you. Uh, the tributes have been everything from heart-wrenching to funny, hilarious, and that's kind of what you've been in our ministry. You've been serious, you've been you know, crazy, you've just been fun, and you've been an amazing person to know, to mentor, a son to me. You came to Mount Zion when you were 18 years old, and I've watched you grow and mature, go through so much, and I've watched you do it with so much grace. And it's been an honor to cover you. It's been an honor to mentor you. And it's an honor to watch you now fly, to leave the nest and to, to fly. And I, I wish nothing but blessings upon you, man. Uh, you have represented the epitome of loyalty. And for that, I appreciate you. I know you'll never forget me, never forget Mount Zion, and know that we love you so much. My wife and I, my children, uh, we just want you to know, man, we're pulling for you and we're praying for you. Thank you for all those late nights that you were handling business for us, zooming me in, FaceTiming me in, in hospital rooms and taking care of things for me that I didn't have to go. Uh, you just took care of stuff, man. You were just that kind of guy. And uh, I'll forever be grateful for who you've been in my life. Thank you. And uh, may God's grace be upon you. And uh, we love you. Be blessed. Mount Zion and friends, join us for our Tuesday morning prayer call with Bishop Walker. Now by phone or watch on IG and Facebook Live. Start your Tuesday with 15 minutes of prayer and devotion each week at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. We look forward to you joining us and don't forget to invite your friends. Mount Zion, get ready for favorite moments from the Mount. Every Wednesday at 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, featuring Pastor Tellis Chapman, Pastor Jerry Black, Bishop Paul S. Morton, Bishop Joseph W. Walker III, and Bishop T.D. Jakes. You don't want to miss one week of this explosive throwback series all month long. Join us for the kickoff this week with Pastor Tellis Chapman. We will see you there on Facebook, YouTube, or on the Mount Zion app. Hey, members, partners, and friends. Have you spoke with Bishop yet? Don't miss your chance every Thursday on Zoom for our virtual connect. Now at a new and earlier time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bring your thoughts, prayer requests, and even questions and meet a few more people all at the same time. We can't wait to connect with you every Thursday at 8 p.m. Our text to give procedures have been enhanced too. Sending a text to 267 MTZ Seed will send an actual text message of your gift. First, start a new text message, sending it to 267-MTZ-SEED. That's 267-689-7333. Then, type your giving keyword along with the amount. For example, to tie $20, type Tithes20 in the message box. Available giving keywords are Tithes, Offering, Vision, TV Partner, and Other. That's it. Giving is more simple and easy to manage. Well, to Bishop Walker and to each of you, it's a privilege and an honor to take a moment and just to express my sentiments regarding all that God has done. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter three, to everything there is a season. And for the last 20 plus years, I've had the privilege of serving Bishop Walker in the Mount Zion Baptist Church. 
You know, when I came to Nashville, I came as a student at American Baptist College. My goal was to come, do my four years, and leave. But God had other plans. You know, when I came to Mount Zion, I immediately began to serve. I remember being at the TSU Gentry Center and watching as Bishop preached the Word of God. And as he preached the Word of God, my heart was enamored by how such a powerful message can reach so many people in that arena. When Bishop would arrive to the TSU Gentry Center, as I would stand there and wait, I noticed how he would drive himself and he was walking up to the door to enter the door. And immediately, instinctively, I ran out, grabbed his stuff. Not because he couldn't carry it on his own, but because I didn't want there to be a distraction to him carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ. From that moment, every time he would arrive, I would stand out there and wait on his arrival to ensure that there would be nothing lacking and nothing wanting as it relates to what he needed to effectively do what God has called for him to do. You know, when I think about my time at Mount Zion, I think about the time that we started the Antioch location. And when we started the Antioch location, the first strategy meeting occurred in the office of Bishop at the Jefferson Street location. And it was at that time that I was assigned to be Bishop's first driver. My responsibility was to go to his home, pick him up, travel from service to service to service, and to make sure that he made it back home safely. I took that job very seriously. As a matter of fact, it was an unpaid job. I didn't do it for the pay. I didn't serve for a position. I served because it was right to serve. And I wanted to serve the angel that God had deposited into the earth realm to be a blessing to so many of us. You know, when I think about the privilege of riding back and forth with Bishop Walker, I would listen to some of the nuggets that he would deposit into my spirit. I would observe various things. You know, there are some things that are caught and there are certain things that are taught. I appreciate the things that Bishop Walker has taught me but I really appreciate the things that I've been able to catch by simply watching and observing what God has done. In the year 2001, I recall being at a college conference. And as I was at a college conference, it was at the TSU Gentry Center. Mount Zion was hosting this college conference. And my friend Melvin Wade and I, we were there. And Bishop walked up to us and said, you know, I want both you and Melvin to lead the college ministry. Melvin said, okay, I'll pray about it. But I said immediately, no, I didn't want to do that. The reason I didn't want to do it is because I didn't think that the students my age would listen to me. What would I say to them? Would they respect the God in me? Or would they just view me as a regular guy that don't know nothing? But I went home and I prayed about it. I went to my dorm, I prayed about it. And the Lord said, do it. Whatever you need, I got you. So I went back and told Bishop Walker, I'll lead the ministry. So as I led the ministry, I didn't do it of my own accord. I prayed and asked the Lord for strength. And through the leadership that God has given to me, we were able to connect with over 10 schools in the Middle Tennessee area, over 3,000 students uh, strong that were part of our college ministry at the time. And I'm so thankful that our pastor saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And I'm thankful that he encouraged me just to pray about it so that through the leadership of the college ministry, it could grow me, develop me, mature me as a leader. I reflect as the leader of the care ministry. You know, for the last several years, it has been my sincere joy and my sincere honor to serve you, the members of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Every opportunity that God has given me to come alongside of you, whether it be in times of good or times of bad, whether it be at a funeral, whether it be at a gravesite, whether it be coming to the hospital, and unfortunately your loved one was transitioning, I viewed that as my opportunity to represent our pastor, but also to represent God in that moment. Sometimes just being there, I didn't have to say a word, but you knew that your pastor loved you and you knew that God loved you. 
Mount Zion, as I transition from this place, the Bible does declare to everything there is a season. And although this season at Mount Zion is up, I will always love Mount Zion. I will always be a son of Mount Zion, a son of Bishop Walker. I want to personally say thank you to the countless ministry leaders and volunteers that I've had the privilege of working with over the years. I want to thank God for the staff of the Mount Zion Baptist Church. Through collaborative leadership, we've been able to do amazing things together. It's been my honor and my joy to serve alongside of you. You know, as we work together to uphold the arms of our pastor as Aaron and her, it was our joy to work together to ensure that Mount Zion would advance, the mission of Mount Zion would come to pass, and ultimately that the kingdom of God would advance. And finally, I want to say thank you to my pastor, Bishop Joseph W. Walker III. I sincerely thank God for you. I appreciate you giving me a chance. I appreciate you seeing something in me that I may not have seen in myself. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your kindness. I appreciate your chastisement. I appreciate your love. And most of all, I appreciate you being who you've been to me throughout these last 20 plus years. Every monumental moment in my life, you've been there. When I graduated college, you were there. When my mother passed away in 2006, your presence was there. When my father passed away in 2019, you were there. And even as I make this transition from Mount Zion Baptist Church, you have reminded me that you will still be there. And I appreciate you. Mount Zion, as I transition, this is a bittersweet moment. I'm sad in my heart, to be honest with you, that I'm leaving many of you. But know that I love each and every one of you with the love of the Lord. It's been a sincere joy and a sincere uh, privilege to come alongside of you and serve you over these last years. And I believe by faith, beloved, that the best is truly yet to come. But then it's a sweet moment because I know that by faith, God only takes us from glory to glory. So I declare and decree over your lives that the best is yet to come. I declare and I decree that what God has started on the inside of you, he will complete into the very day of Jesus Christ. If you would just do me a favor, I don't wanna ask much of you, but if you would do me one favor, let's continue to keep our pastor lifted in prayer. It was my joy over the last 20 plus years to pray for our pastor and I will continue. It was my joy over the last 20 plus years to support our pastor and I will continue. But I wanna encourage you to continue to keep him lifted. I wanna encourage you to keep his arms lifted as Aaron and her held up the arms of their leader. I wanna encourage you to do all that you can to ensure that our pastor is successful. Because if he's successful, Mount Zion will be successful. As I close, Mount Zion, I still wanna be connected to you and I want you to be connected to me. So on the screen right now is an email address. I want you to connect with me. If you're having a baby dedication, if there's a funeral, I just wanna pray for you. Doesn't mean that you want me to come, I just wanna pray for you. If there's anything that I can do to serve you, you can connect with me. You can follow me on social media, the information is right there on your screen. I love each and every one of you. Until next time, be blessed. Lord, we love you. And we just want to express how much we love you, Jesus. If you don't mind, wherever you are, beginning to lift up a worship to our God and tell him how much you love him and tell him how much you care. Hallelujah. song simply says I love you Jesus I worship and adore Jesus
just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love Jesus. I worship and the door. I just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than any. Yes, I do. Say, I love. I love you, Jesus. Somebody say, I worship. I worship as a Lord. Just wanna tell Just you. Want to tell you. Lord, I love you. And I worship, worship as a Lord. Just wanna tell. But I need you to tell Jesus that you love him Just wherever you are, I don't know what you're doing Just take some time out of your day And tell him I love you, Jesus You're more than the world, Jesus You're more than anything I can ever have, Jesus You're more than that ACT score You're more than that diploma You're more than anything I could ever have Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you Lord, we love you, Lord, we love you, Lord, we love you Lord, we love you, Lord, we love you, Lord, we love you. We love you, we love you, love you. We love you, we love you, love you. We love you, we love Let's get ready for the word of the Lord today. It's Elevation part five. And I want to go over Psalm 113, seven through nine. Father, speak to us today. Let our faith be strengthened. Let somebody's soul be saved. And we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children Praise the Lord. I want you to think about this for a moment because this is going to be a, a word that you can take with you wherever you go. 
it won't end like it started. When I was a child, I loved superheroes. I loved watching them overcome obstacle after obstacle. Didn't you? I had comic books. I mean, I absolutely was enamored by the storyline. And the most intriguing part of watching or reading about these particular stories was the drama, the tension that was in the story. The parts where it appeared that the superhero would never emerge out of it, things would never get better. And what I discovered, however, is that regardless of how the drama started in the city or the narrative, the writer had already factored in this and had scripted that at the end of the story, the superhero would always come out on top. I'm an advocate. I am a person who advocates for the word of God, and I believe with all of my heart that God has inspired his word given to us by the Holy Spirit and has scripted that at the end of the story, we always, as children of God, come out on top. You know, I believe it's important because no matter our situation, no matter our circumstance, all of us must understand that it's not so much how a thing starts that matters, but it's ultimately how that thing turns around. It's a marvelous story in mythology. The Greeks and the Egyptians would tell the story of the mythical phoenix bird. And they would speak of this bird that would live for 500 years, only one bird at a time. And the bird, after 500 years, would be on fire, set itself on fire, and from the ashes would emerge again in rebirth. And what a marvelous revelation there. From the ashes, life would spring up. I'm preaching this message today, and I want you to hear me loud and clear, because when there is an anointing of elevation on your life, you have to know that whatever it is, it won't end like it started. God is in control of the narrative, and he's actively participating in your deliverance right now. And because you know who God is, you have to know that your God would never leave you in a situation to perish that's why it pays to never give up on a child of God. I feel sorry for the folk that gave up on you, people that wrote you off in certain chapters of your life, not knowing that the story was still being written. But God kept you through it all. And elevation is a part of your narrative. It's a part of where God has taken you. And that's why I thank God for the folk that rolled with me, that hung in there with me, that were faithful. Because when God elevates you, you'll remember the people that hung in there with you during the tough times. And you'll be able to let them know that God was in control of how this thing turned out. You see, I want to tell you something. You're listening to this message today, going through some serious challenges. I know it. Somebody right now, you're going through some things that are stretching your faith, things that are causing you now, like never before, to really evaluate life, evaluate decisions, and it looks like in some instances nothing can be done. But I want you to get it in your spirit, no matter what it is, it will not end the way it started. It will not end the way it started. Psalm 113 is a part of a collection of psalms called the Hallel Psalms. These were songs that were sung by the children of Israel to, to reflect over the Passover event. Ceremony of Passover was when they would reflect over God's delivering power, bringing them out of Egypt and bringing them into the promised land. And when you read Psalm 113, even through Psalm 118, these Hallel Psalms were sung with great convictions because it spoke to the active, powerful, delivering hand of God. And I want you to hear this because what this writer declares is that it was out of the ashes. God raised up his children. And I want to start there because I want you to know that God raises us up from the rubbish. The psalmist testifies of the power of God in raising up his people from the dust. 
that when you're in a situation like this, it can be demoralizing because it appears that there's no path forward. The ash pile and the dust, the remnants of destruction, the damage has been done in your life and it appears that it's all a part of the wreckage. Who am I talking to? It appears that it's so wrecked, it's so damaged that nothing can ever emerge out of it. It appears that the enemy has won. What should you remember when life presents itself like that? Well, here it is. When others give up, he shows up. What a powerful revelation because it's consistent with who God has always been. He's a God who refuses to watch his children remain in the same place beneath their God-given potential and divine destiny. He is a God who responds. David even declared on one occasion in Psalm 40, I waited patiently on the Lord. He inclined unto me, heard my cry, brought me up out of the harbor pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock. I mean, it is the same God, right, who refused to allow his children to stay in Egyptian bondage. He told Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, and God brings them out. He is the same God who brings the three Hebrew boys out of the fiery furnace, the same God who brings Daniel out of the lion's den and who delivers Peter out of prison and Paul and Silas from the jailhouse. This is the same God who has delivered before and who can deliver right now. And don't get so discouraged when other people leave you because they don't realize who you are. Some people disconnect when you and don't realize the destiny that God has on your life. You got to remember, you are a child of God with purpose on your life and the purpose on you is greater than anything the enemy can ever throw at you. Here's the other thing. God raises you up to bring you out. The beautiful thing about God is that God is not an enabler. He refuses to enable us. He raised them up to bring them out. It's one thing to be raised up out of a thing, but it's another thing to be actually delivered from it completely. You remember the story of Lazarus? Lazarus was in the tomb. Jesus spoke to Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus was raised up in the tomb, but Lazarus had to come out. Sometimes you can get a word, and that word can quicken you and raise you up, but you have the responsibility to come out. You can wallow in that dust if you want. You can sit back and say, yeah, I got a word, but nothing in your situation changes, or you can declare today, I'm coming out of this. I believe somebody today ought to declare, I'm coming out. I'm coming out of debt. I am coming out of bad relationships. I'm coming out of dysfunction. I'm coming out of a mindset that limits me. I am coming out of everything that wants to hinder me from what God wants to do in my life. I'm coming out. I need somebody right now in the digital world just to put it all in the timeline. I'm coming out. And here's the deal. What God does, he realigns our relationships. Now let, let's let that sink in. Because when God does this, the text shares that our relationship, watch this, our relationships must match where God's taking us. This is always a tough thing because when you, when you are loyal and you have relationships with people, it's hard sometimes because sometimes the relationships don't match where you're going. But I want to help you understand something. The Bible says he makes them sit with princes. What a revelation. The revelation is of strategic relationship. People will never have imagined some of the things God's about to do in their life. Let me tell you what God's going to do. He's putting you in places that will exceed expectations. We are princes and royalty in God's kingdom. And God will raise us up to sit with our peers in the kingdom. Out from the dust, out from the ashes, 
Here you are emerging. Now, I know when you come out of the dust and the ashes and the remnants are on you, people then categorize you and think that you would never be at certain levels or altitudes. But please understand, you got to remember who you are. I am a royal priesthood. I'm a chosen generation. I am the head and not the tail. So I'm not defined by the circumstance I just came out of. I got destiny on my life. And no matter what anybody else calls me, remember, this was a Hillel song. Bringing, thinking about how God brought them out of Egypt. When God sent Moses to Egypt, you go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. I belong to God. I belong to God. Woo, I said, I belong to God. And as a consequence, I understand that what God is getting ready to do in my life is going to exceed expectation. He is raising me up in places that he's going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ask or I could think. Now watch this. <clears throat> he is giving you a revelation of your royalty. Here's a real season where you're going to discover who you are. Some of you have yet to really understand the greatness on your life because you've been so You've been so impacted negatively by the circumstances of your trauma and the dust and the coming out of that ash heap. It's hard sometimes when you've been labeled and you've been labeled as hopeless or dead, but you are a royal priesthood. You are God's amazing children. And, and watch this. Here's some things. When God is bringing you out, there's a few things you got to remember. Listen, there are four shifts you got to have when God is getting ready to bring you out, I want you to hear all of them. Pay attention. Write these down. Number one, shift your mindset. You got to change the way you're thinking. It's about an ethos. It's about, can I change my mentality? Because here's the deal. Here it is. Your, you change your reality when you change your mentality. You change your reality when you change your mentality. The reason why some people stay in the same place, because their mind thinks too small. Here's the other thing. Once you shift your mindset, then you shift your crowd. Because your crowd matters. When your mind changes, then you start evaluating your circle and you start saying, why am I hanging out with this person? Why am I hanging out in this crowd? I understand Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and doth he meditate day and night. I understand now what this looks like. My crowd matters. Number three, I shift my level of expectation. Now, before... I didn't necessarily expect big things to happen to me. I never imagined that something like that could be offered to me. It's like Mephibosheth, who stands before King David and doesn't think that he deserves it. Can something like that happen to me? But when you shift your mind, when you shift your crowd, you shift your expectation. You start expecting stuff out of the box. You start expecting expecting bigger things. There's some of you right now, you on the edge of your seat because this word is speaking right to you because when your expectation changes, everything around you starts changing. And watch this. Then you shift your commitment to him to another level. Now my commitment to God has gone to a whole nother level. I've elevated my prayer life. I've elevated my giving. I've elevated my discipline. I'm in a point in my life that I need these four things to manifest in my life. Why? Because what God did in this psalm, I promise you, he's going to do in your life. He restores the rejected. My God, I feel like preaching now. The Bible says that he gives the barren woman a home. Can I say that again? He gives the barren woman a home. It's a powerful metaphor. This symbolism has deep implications because barrenness in those days was viewed negatively. As a matter of fact, in a patriarchal society, a woman who could not produce a child, specifically a male child, endured horrendous social and religious uh, persecution and scrutiny. As a matter of fact, the idea that she was without a home suggests that she was literally out there by herself without a covering, without literally having compassion, and in many instances, without even having a 
companion. And all of us have been in those places when we've had circumstances where we just felt like we were out there by ourselves. Barrenness is not just physiological. Barrenness, people of God, can happen financially. It can happen vocationally. It can happen relationally. When that thing just isn't jumping off, I just can't birth it. I just can't make it happen. And what do you do when you find yourself in a place of barrenness where you just seem like you can't produce it? It just can't happen for you. Like everything you're trying to do just isn't manifesting. I, I got a word for you today, people of God. You have got to get to a place in your life that you know that whatever you're going through, he knows all about it. I said he knows all about it. God is keenly aware of the plight of his people and the scripture is reminding us that whatever we go through never goes unnoticed. When you are in a barren situation, it appears that it's you against the world. You need to know that the Lord says that he heard you. The Lord says that he feels you. He has empathy for you. He knows just like he heard Hannah when Hannah was barren, just like he heard and he understood that, that when Sarah was without child, God knows when you are struggling to produce and struggling to birth. And that's why the psalmist says, people of God, in Psalm 34 and 18, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Isaiah 59 and 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. I've got some witnesses out there now that you've got your own testimony that you called on God and God was right there. God just kept reminding you, I understand what you're going through and I'm going to be right here. I give God glory that he may not come when I want him to, but he's always on time. Here's the deal. He not only gives comfort, but he gives covering. I want you to pay attention to this because the Bible says that God gives her a home. That's a big deal. In a barren situation where you're uncovered, there are consequences to being uncovered. To be barren and uncovered means that one, she, there's exposure. You expose, you're out there, like you're just naked and out there. Let's, let's just, everybody can see you're on public display. Everybody knows it. And then you have to deal with the impact of the element. Without having a covering, you're out there. So when it's cold or when it's hot, you're dealing with the impact of the weather. You're dealing with the impact of, of the scrutiny. You're dealing with the impact because you're just out there. And then you have to deal with your emotions. How do you manage that? How do you manage it sociologically? How do you manage it psychologically? How do you manage it theologically? Raising questions with God raising questions with people. Why are you being treated the way you're being treated? But the fact that God cares so much is a blessing because God told me to tell somebody he got you covered. God told me to remind somebody today that no matter how you've been left out there by yourself and you may not have been producing, God says, I have you covered. He will not leave you in the ash pile and the dust, but God will bring you out of this situation. It will not it will not be like it started. It's going to end differently than it started. And people of God, I want to talk to somebody right now who's out there, but you need to know right now that God's got you covered. And here it is. God says, I got you by protection. I will cover you and protect you. God says, I will provide provision for you. Whatever needs you have, I am the Lord who will provide for my children and I am a God who will bring you peace that will bring peace to your troubled mind. And here's the final thing I want to tell you. Child of God, when you reflect, you will rejoice. Woo! There is nothing more powerful than reflection. When a child of God looks back over their life, it allows us to look back and see how far God's brought us. Man, when you begin to think about the fact of how far God brought you, when you think, you'll think. The psalmist says, you would rejoice like a mother of children. Man, look at you'll rejoice like a mother of children. Can I tell you something? Never forget where the Lord found you. Let me say it again. Never forget where the Lord found you. Whatever level the Lord brings you to, it is important for you never to have amnesia. 
Don't just arrive among the princes and the house of covering and you forget that the Lord found you in the ash pile. We need some real testimonies, not these cookie cutter testimonies where people think that they literally have been where they are all their lives. Do you know that there is power in your testimony that somebody needs to know where God found us? I was in the ash pile. I was in the dust. I was written off. I was given up on. I didn't think I was going to make it myself, but that's where God found me. And when you tell your real testimony, that's when it becomes a Haleo psalm because people are able to see the hand of God delivering you because if God could deliver you from that, I know God can deliver me. You see, child of God, I'll never forget where the Lord brought me from. I'm up here preaching, but I haven't always been saved. I haven't always been where I am now. And I want people to understand how far God brought me. And here's the deal. I don't look like what I've been through. I think somebody right now ought to be running around your house giving God glory that you don't look like what you've been through because the fact that God changed your location and changed your situation assures you that it won't end like it started. When it started, I was a mess. Listen, I was written off. I was covered in ash. I was covered in dust. But watch what happened. God lifted me up. God brought me out. And as a consequence, I'm giving God glory because of how good God has been. Who wouldn't praise a God like that? Who wouldn't give God glory when you look back over your life? Man, you're supposed to be torn up from the floor up. But look at how good God has been to you. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to just reflect over the goodness of God, where God found you, how God brought you out, how God never gave up on you when others said it was over. But look at what God did. God rescued you out of the rubbish, out of the ash. And today, I want you to open up your mouth and I want you to thank God for elevation because thank God you, elevated you because Hallelujah. he brought you out. And God didn't bring you out to be quiet. God brought you out to open up your mouth. Here it is. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord uh -huh. say so. Say so. Who he has brought up out of the ashes, out of the dust pile, I'm giving him glory. It won't end. Glory. It won't. It won't end, child of God, like it started. Look at me. It won't. God will not let your narrative be defined by the enemy's intent to keep you in a place of oppression and depression and suppression. God is a great liberator and he can bring you out of whatever situation you're entangled in now. And I want you to know right now, lift your hands right now and I want you to thank him. I want you to thank him because I'm in a place of elevation because of where God brought me from. Thank you, Lord. Elevation implies God brought me from here to there. And I want to be honest about where I was Thank you, so Jesus. people can appreciate where I am now. While you're watching me now, you need a relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen to me. You're watching me now, and you need a relationship with him. I want you to email me at salvation at mtzionnashville.org. You need a church home. You need a covering. I want you to do it right now. As a matter of fact, if you need a relationship with Jesus Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Just say, dear Lord God, come into my life. I believe that you died, sent your son for my sins. And now I believe he rose from the grave to give me eternal life. The Bible says that confession is made with your mouth. If you believe in your heart, 
you confess that with your mouth, you shall be saved. I want you to do it. I want you to email me. You need a church home. You've been in this pandemic. You're like, I got to connect. I need a ministry. I meet people all around Nashville. I'm meeting with people I've been watching. I've been streaming in. I've been watching your ministry. But guess what? Now is the time to connect. You need a covering. You need a covering. You don't need to be out there by yourself. You need a word of God pouring into your life. Do it right now. Salvation at mtzionnashville.org. Right now. I want you to do it right now. Come on, right now. There's a story behind my praise that's why my hands I'll continue <laughs> to raise oh yes. I'm gonna praise him for the rest of my day there's a story behind my praise if you see me shouting Oh, that's my story How he's been God for me In all his glory If you see me crying oh, Don't think it's strange I just realize where and when I got saved. Oh, if you see me dancing, don't think it's strange. My whole life. for
thank you for, tr for streaming in today and I pray that this, this word, I pray that this service blessed you and I pray that you will stay connected to us. We'd love to hear from you. Make sure you connect with me at Joseph Walker 3 and share, share and like, share and like. Power God. One thing I am very convinced of, God controls how the story ends. So may God bless you. May God keep you. May God make his face shine upon you until we meet again. In Jesus' name.